Hey guys, today I am going to recap a 2014 drama movie named The Secret Sex Life of a Single Mother. You, man show your support, and please subscribe to my channel. So let's begin. Delane Morris, a mother of two kids, sits on her bed and makes a call. In the call, she tells the man she will be submissive to him and she will be a sub. Just as she drops her call, her son Tyler calls out for her. He tells her his friend Chad's mother told him Chad won't be coming for practice sometime that week and Delane shouldn't pick him up. After that conversation with Tyler, Delane decides to say her story. She says the story may be sad, frightening, and annoying, but it's her true life story. It's not a fantasy or a movie. It's a reality. More than half of people watch videos but don't subscribe. Although it looks so much like it's a fantasy. She starts the story from the beginning. The beginning, just like every other story starts just before she became a single mother, she was married to Robert. Although it's a very unhappy marriage at home, Tyler plays a video game dot where he uses the word she, he stops him from using the words and warns him to stop the game. Just as she speaks to him, her husband Robert calls. She picks up and asks him if he has lodged into his hotel but he responds that if he hasn't lodged in he wouldn't call her. She takes that statement just as she has always been taking every other bad thing Robert does to her. He tells her he will have to extend his trip as he wants to hang out with the boys more and she allows him. She however asks if he will be home for Halloween and he tells her she has asked the same question about twice. Her daughter Amanda asks if she could speak to her father and when Delane tells Robert about this he says he wants to meet the boys and that he will talk to them later. Delane apologizes to Amanda, then they sit for dinner. The following day Delane receives a call. She wakes up and picks up the call and a lady speaks. She asks if Robert and Delane tells her that he isn't around and he has gone to work. The lady ends the call immediately. Delane calls the number back and the receptionist at the bar that the call was made from picks up. She asks the man about the lady that called her just now and he tells her it's a lady called Natasha, but Natasha doesn't want to speak to her again. She instantly calls Robert. She tells him his girlfriend called her and he asks who is the girlfriend. Immediately she mentions Natasha. He tells her he is coming home immediately. He returns home and he speaks to her. He tells her he never loved Natasha and that what was between them was purely sexual. He pours the fault on Delane and says it's because she doesn't want him and she doesn't make him feel wanted. That's why he went to find sexual pleasure outside their home. One way or the other, Delane takes the blames upon herself. She accepts it's her fault and she tries to have intercourse with him. She forgives him for cheating, but during the intercourse she keeps feeling hatred toward him. She knows her marriage isn't working but for her children. She decides to make it work. One day she visits a friend complaining of waist pain. She tells her she has complained to several doctors but but the response is that nothing is wrong with her. The woman recommends an acupuncturist who helps her with her neck and tells her to meet Graham, the acupuncturist. She tells Robert of the decision but Robert says it's a waste of time and if she chooses to visit an acupuncturist she will forfeit her gym membership. She accepts and decides for herself. For the first time she meets with Graham and on their first meeting he tells her that pain is from the breakage of energy called she in the body and it may be caused physically or mentally. He says since her doctors have assured her nothing is wrong with her her problem could be emotional. He asks her if anything is disturbing her mind and she denies it. He tells her with time they will have a breakthrough. She gets familiar with Graham and she increases her visit to twice a week. After several meetings she gets what she could call a breakthrough. She confesses to Graham that her husband cheated. She says she doesn't blame him because when she looks up at Natasha's picture online she looks so beautiful. But Graham tells her Robert's decision to cheat is on him and not her. She tells him she has decided to do a boobs implant so she can be more attractive to him. Graham asks her if she really wants the implant and if she is happy with it. She tells him that she knows she will be happy when she is attractive to him and when he is happy. He tells her marriage isn't built like that. He says love and marriage are built majorly on spiritual things than physical ones. There has to be a spiritual bond and she has a great load of positive energy, so Robert isn't putting his energy into their marriage. His words make Delane feel positive about herself. She starts caring about how she looks and she looks forward to how he sees her. She starts getting better and during one of their meeting Graham tells her he is meant to advise her to stop coming regularly, but he can't do it. They start kissing. She stops for a while thinking about her decision, but she eventually continues. For the first time she cheats on her husband with Graham. Some people say cheating builds a marriage, but it didn't build hers. It only gave her an option. She feels like leaving the marriage, but she can considers that she doesn't want her kids to have a broken home. She speaks to one of her female friends who asked her what Graham thinks about her decision and she tells her that Graham thinks having a happy, 
separated home can raise better kids than having an unhappy home. She keeps thinking of how to break the news to Robert, until one night that night, Robert tells her he will be scheduling her for her breast implant. She tells him she doesn't want the breast implant and wants to leave the marriage. He tells her she doesn't know the worth of what she has and if she knows how many women will give everything for what she has. He tells her she is just seeking attention and he sends her away from the bedroom. They decide on the divorce and he moves out of the house. She sits her children down to explain the situation to them, but Tyler doesn't understand. He walks out on her, but Amanda hugs her. Eventually, the kids start getting used to things and she feels more alive. Tyler also starts understanding things and she is happy. She goes out to a playground with her kids. She meets Sarah, the mother of one of her kids' friends, Hannah, and sits to speak with Sarah. Sarah notices she is happy despite being recently divorced. And she tells Sarah she has met someone else. She talks about Graham and it seems like Sarah knows Graham. Sarah tells her Graham is engaged to a pregnant woman with his child. She refuses to believe her words, so she approaches Graham, who says he didn't tell her because he assumes she will know the truth by herself. She tells him she left her husband for him, but he tells her she left him because he didn't appreciate her. She leaves his home heartbroken and shattered. Later, her friend advises her to try online dating. She messages a man named Cal and they intend to meet at a bar. When she gets to the bar, she sits and waits for him, but he sits her up as she leaves the bar. Angrily, she goes to Graham's home and knocks on the door, crying what she calls the grandfather of all mistakes. She returns home to write an insulting message to Cal, having given up on online dating. She messages a man named Cal and they intend to meet at a bar when she gets to the bar she sits and waits for him but he sits her up as she leaves the bar angrily she goes to Graham's home and knocks on the door crying what she calls the grandfather of all mistakes she returns home to write an insulting message to Cal having given up on online dating she receives a message from a man named the Duke who says he will teach her how to be assertive by being dominating as they talk more he says he doesn't do rough sex but he is dominating she tells her friend about him sends her kids to her friend and then has phone sex with the Duke he orders her to remove her clothes by the window she hesitates because she doesn't want her neighbor to think she is underscore but he tells her being underscore is being assertive she does what he asks her to do later she meets with a 24 years old guy named Peyton in hopes of making him her sex slave based on Duke's instruction the date is going on well until Robert comes and he sees her later and says she has become a underscore but she tells him who she is doesn't concern him she narrates this to Duke who commands her to go to a sex club and see how assertive women behave she goes there with Peyton on her three month state anniversary with Peyton he tells her he sees a future in her but she informs him he is just a kid upon getting home she sees Duke has sent her his picture for the first time she figures most single mothers have worked so she decides to start an online business of interior decoration she tells Duke and he encourages her to do it she visits Seattle to meet Duke for the first time he gives her a cloth and commands her on how to wear it he is so dominant that she finds herself doing everything he wants after her stay with him she learns about business and figures being subdominant isn't about the controller but about the one who is being controlled she enjoys Duke control over her because she has given him control she figures she has to start controlling her life and she learns a lot from Duke she leaves for home starts her interior decoration business and as well she invites Robert for Christmas something she could have never done months ago she has learned how to guard herself and she aims to guard him too she teaches him to forgive himself during Amanda's birthday she goes to a supermarket to buy a tiara she isn't tall enough to pick it up from the shelf and Amanda Aiden helps her Aiden collects her number hoping to get feedback after the party she allows Robert to bring his new girlfriend Pam to the party so he will introduce her to the kids they all have a fun party and she allows the kids to leave with Robert and Pam she tells herself that she loves that Robert is happy and is glad she has become the woman she wants after the party she receives Aiden's call and they talk and the movie ends here so I hope you enjoy the video so click any video and free them and then join next and don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the like button thank you for watching see you soon